Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to the episode. We are uh, moving on with this uh, Microsoft VDI series and we're, we're coming towards the end of the uh, Windows 365 or Cloud PC, whatever you want to call it, subtopic. Um, so we're going to continue to talk about um, planning for Windows. So it's been like a three part subtopic is that within Windows 365. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I mentioned, this is the Cloud uh, VDI series. Um, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about creating a rollout plan. So this is part three of the planning for Windows 365. We're going to talk about communication plan and talk about end user support. So let's talk about creating a rollout plan first. So this is obviously the next step in determining how and when your users are going to receive their cloud PCs. Um, you need to define a role, the rollout phases, first of all. You need to create multiple rollout phases based on, on your environment. Make sure you start off with like a pilot, um, you know, and, and sort of testing groups as well. Uh, early phases should include end users who are okay with like change, willing to adopt new, new, new you know, services and, and solutions. Um, so those that are willing to give feedback as well. Uh, and, and kind of the ones that uh, know that uh, they're, they're the first kind of users, so they're, they're new to this, you know, the first ones using technology in the organization. Then what we can do is we can use that feedback to improve that role experience when we do it to the wider audience. Later phases should include VIPs and executives, keep those to the end. Um, and the rollouts allow you to improve the deployment as you advance through the phases. And before ending a phase, determine if the phase is a success based on, on the, the goals that you set at the beginning of the project. Make sure you modify the configuration, documentation or notifications based on the feedback as well. You need to define your goals and your success metrics as well. Make sure goals are, are smart. By that we mean uh, specific, measurable, uh, attainable, realistic and timeless. That's an acronym for SMART. Plan to measure against your goals at each phase so you, you roll out project stays on track. Uh, possible su su success metrics include end user survey results, make sure they're over 80%. Uh, satisfied, also make sure you know, look at usage on provision devices and make sure that's over 85% or more. So those sort of targets for success uh, metrics are quite good. And, and finally, look at communication as well. Communication goals include the goals in all sort of awareness and, and sort of training activities so the end users understand why your organization chose Windows 365. Because, you know, a lot of time when we do these projects, you know, the end user feels a bit isolated and kind of left out of the loop. So make sure you include them in that so they understand why you've gone, why the organization has gone down this um, path. Talk specifically about the communication plan now. You know, change management relies on clear and helpful communication about upcoming changes. The best way to have a smooth deployment is to make sure users are aware of all the changes and disruptions. As I mentioned, make sure you talk to them. The task that we as a as a you know project team should, should do is you know your rollout communication plan should include important information, um, how to notify users and when to communicate as well. Have a plan that includes when, what, and how to communicate. Determine the information to communicate as well. Communicate multiple times to different phases of end users. You know, in the kickoff phases, broad communication that includes Windows 365. In this communication, make sure you answer sort of key questions. They can include what Cloud PC is. Why is the organization using Cloud PC? Include sort of benefits to end users as well. What are they benefiting from it? Um, and also provide high level plan of deployment as well so they can, on a key date, so they can kind of make note of those. In the pilot phase, include additional information to the pilot phase end users. Make sure they understand that they're in a pilot phase and should submit feedback. Then you've got the onboarding phase, so communication targeting specific end users and groups that are scheduled to begin using Cloud PT. This communication should inform end users that their Cloud PT is ready to go and they can use it. Make sure you include instructions on, on how to connect to Cloud PC from any sort of platform to end users uh, that they might use. In case end users have issues, again, you should also provide sort of help desk details and, and, and how they can contact um, IT help. Uh, make sure you choose how to communicate Cloud PC to your target groups and users. Certain examples could include company-wide meetings, Microsoft Teams, you know, company newsletters and emails. 
from boarding communication, consider sending information in an email to end users. Uh, and end user support, I've kind of mentioned that just then about making sure you communicate how the, the, the kind of users who are using Cloud PC can contact support for issues. Include your IT support and help desk in early stages of Windows 365 deployment and planning process. Early involvement lets the support staff gain knowledge and experience in identifying and resolving issues more effectively. Also prepares them for support production rollouts as well. Knowledgeable help desks and support teams also help end users adopt to change as well. A task us as an organisation should do is incorporate support training. Validate the end user experience in support with success metrics in your deployment plan. Consider who will support the end users. Many organisations have multiple tiers and levels of support. Consider how each level can support end users on boarding and using Windows 365. Make sure you create a help desk flow as well. Constantly communicate support issues, trends and other sort of important information to all tiers of that support team. And finally, train your help desk and support teams. Consider training to include all scenarios of Windows 365 um, and the, the sort of scenarios that are going to be used. Also consider training on all support Windows 365 platforms as well. So we've not got a demo in this episode, a bit more of a, a bit more of a delivery sort of episode about for Windows 365. Um, I think with the episodes, I've got a couple more. We've done a lot of deployment, we've done a lot of demos already, so coming towards the end of this topic, Windows 365, we're going to have less demos coming up. Um, but hopefully you are learning and understanding a bit more about uh, Windows 365, and not just the technical aspects, there's a lot more to it than just technical and deploying it. Especially if you, you know, you're deploying it to, to your organisation, you need to know these sort of things, the sort of stuff we talked about, delivery plans, communication plans, and user support, this sort of stuff. Um, you know, drop me a comment if you have any experiences of deploying Windows 365 and, and how, you know, how did you guys deal with the communication file? What was your communication plan? You know, drop me, drop me a comment. I'd love to understand how organizations are, are doing and, and the differences between different organizations. Um, so thank you for joining me. Until next time, goodbye.